What's happening guys we're gonna build a kit today uh, sorry again for the air conditioning noise but it is like 70 plus percent humidity here in the Ohio Valley this is Wigonier kit Wigonier DIY kits 1 to 50 megahertz frequency counter meter I got this from Amazon and uh, I built another frequency counter kit that if I actually remember I'll link to down below which turned out to be a nice frequency counter the it was it's the yellow one which I sent off to uh, one of you guys somebody on the west coast I believe could be Oregon or the deserts of California I don't remember which but hey I do send out a ton of stuff to you guys after I build it because frankly I'm running out of room anyway this is 11 bucks it looks to be the same circuit it's based off of a PIC microcontroller um, I forget the guy's name who designed this I think he was a radio ham and then the Chinese basically just stole it from him and started making it on their own so yeah that was really nice of them so what we've got here is we have our PIC microcontroller. We've got some voltage divider. Oh, no, it's not a voltage divider. Any going on, is it? Those are um, current limiting for the segments. We've got a little oscillator going on down here for our uh, frequent, not for our frequency counter, for the uh, crystal tester. Well. You'll see as we put it together it's it's really simple it's all based on the pick it's all based on timing and it is a nice little kit so we're going to start with the lowest height components which is going to be the resistors and um nicely i like this is the one thing i love about all these super cheap chinese kits is they just print the values on there so there's no worry whatsoever so let's start with 1k and that will be these guys here you can use a former a component former if you want i don't um just really don't find it to be necessary that you're, I mean, you're not building this for production, and you can just bend them with your fingers quite easily. All right, I'll try and keep the color code in the same order because I know when I put the wrong backs on the multimeters to mess with you guys' OCD, I got a couple of emails and somebody had to go for some counseling. But hey, sorry about that. All right, I'm going to put these in. I'm sure you don't want to watch me put them all in, do you? All right, I got all my 1K resistors in, so let's go ahead and solder them up first. No, don't worry, I'm not going to make you guys stare at that reflection on the screen. As usual, I'll be using the MG Chemicals 6040 solder if I can find the end of it there we go and my Zenny 937D trusty soldering iron so there's a not a lot to build in these kits I mean uh, pretty much make sure you got the stuff in the right hole if it has polarity, you know, make sure you got the polarity correct. Don't put the solder on the iron and carry it to the joint. Heat the joint and the component at the same time. Add the solder. Just like that. And you'll get beautiful shiny joints every time. Uh, I learned to solder well over 30 years ago. I mean, I've been soldering and making shit, I'm swearing a lot today, making stuff like this since I was a kid, 
but I learned to properly solder about 30 years ago at the uh, Naval Retreat, Retreat, Recruit Training Command in San Diego, California. After I finished boot camp, in the middle of winter by the way, it was, it was January, so it was lovely 72 degrees in San Diego, you just can't beat winter in Southern California. Then I got, well I was supposed to go to basic electricity and electronic school, which was actually on the same base, just a different building. But they were full up for like 12 weeks. So I ended up getting sent to my next school first, which sounds fine, except it was submarine school. And it was in Groton, Connecticut, in New England, um, in the middle of winter. So I got on a plane. You know, dressed for Southern California winter, 72 degrees, and got off in the middle of Antarctica, basically. So that took a little adapting. But anyway, that's, that's not the point of the story. The point of the story was learning to solder. So anyway, after sub-school, I went back to San Diego. I went to BWE, Basic Electricity and Electronics, which at the time was kind of a teach yourself kind of class. It was basically watch a videotape, go do the labs, which you checked out, and then you took an automated test. Pretend you don't see that, and we're gonna fix it. Yeah, you go take a test and it had one of those automated uh, grading systems which are now in use everywhere but at the ow that's hot but at the time were quite novel okay so next up is our 100k resistor that will be this one Anyway, so part of basic electricity electronics, or as we called it, BWE, was of course you had to learn to solder. And it was, a, it was one of the self-study courses, but the labs all had helpers in them who were basically, you know, electronics technicians, sonar technicians, radar technicians, avionics technicians, you know, that kind of thing, who were on land for a while. Oh, I think I accidentally filled a... Uh, no, it's okay. I thought I filled the wrong hole. Wrong hole? What do you mean wrong hole? Sorry, I digress. That's a joke about a businessman going to Japan, but we'll tell that another time. All right, 10K resistors. That is particularly bad job of uh, soldering those resistors on there. Oh my. Well, pretend like you don't see that, okay? 10K, 10K. All right, we're good. Uh, those crafty Chinese always like to throw in an extra one. I know you can't see this. I'm just, I'm just feeding resistors into holes. When I flip it over, we'll, we'll get it going right for you. Don't worry. Oh yeah, I was learning to I was learning to solder. Anyway, um, there was this chief. He was either a senior chief or a master chief. I don't remember, but God, he was probably my age. You know, about just about fifty years old. And uh, he was a Filipino. Not that I'm making a racial a racial comment. There are a lot of Filipinos in the U.S. Navy. And his name was Chief Reyes. And, you know, he's a very small man. Very angry man. 
But uh, he taught me how to solder basically by threatening my life if I couldn't get it <laughs> the way he wanted it. So, yeah, that's how I learned to solder. My chief ray is threatening me. Okay. If you're a fan of Big Clive, and, I mean, if you like my channel, you better be a fan of Big Clive. Um, he talks about the only way to really learn how to solder is to do it, and he's absolutely right. Um, I mean, the Navy had their way of teaching you to do it, but just doing it is the way to do it. Just get yourself a soldering iron, get yourself some cheap kits, and sit down and do it. All right, we're going to move on to these ceramic capacitors here. These are 22 picofarad. I, I, I try not to say puff. I don't know why. It just bothers me. 22. 22. Okay. Those are going to be used as uh, load capacitors for the crystal oscillator. So there are three 22 picofarad caps, and we're going to solder them in now. Like I said, I'd always been playing around with electronics when I was a kid, and um, I went to a small high school. I mean, I graduated from a class of 62. I think I was number 61 out of 62. I uh, did not apply myself, as they like to say. Anyway, so there wasn't a lot of highly technological education. My fingers will not go where I'm telling them to. So I never had any experience with a lot of test equipment other than my Uncle Dick had a Simpson analog multimeter, which I love to play with. And then I had my stuff that I played with, but no oscilloscopes or frequency counters or any of that kind of good stuff for me to play with back then. So it wasn't until I got into the Navy that I was first exposed to that. This is a 102. These are multi-layer ceramic caps. I'm going to try and set these at about the same height as the other ones, and I'm going to solder them in individually. So it was nice when I got to go do those labs, and like lab number two was about learning about oscilloscopes, and I spent a lot of time redoing that lab. Oh, I mean, I'd passed it, obviously. But I just kept doing it over and over again, just so I could play with all the different features. And it was a, it was an old analog Tektronics. We're talking the late '80s here. This is a 104. So you know there were no DSOs at the time. And just the first time that I hooked the scope up, whoops. To, you know, to the internal square wave generator that all scopes have basically for calibration, I was just enthralled. That was, I was like, oh, I can see current. I can see electricity. I can see what's going on. That's when I was hooked. I mean, I was pretty shiftless up at that point. I didn't know where I was going or what I was going to do. I, I basically went in the Navy, so they pay for me to go to college. I'm looking at these resistors here so we can figure out what's coming up next. One moment. They've given me three things in this little TO-22 package. This one is a 9018, and it goes here. So we will solder him in right now. Yeah, it was um, it was getting my hands on that oscilloscope. 
It really set me on the path. So if you've got youngsters, you know, in your life who you think might be interested in a scope, by all means, let them get their hands on your scope. Don't be going all Kevin Spacey on them, but uh, definitely expose them to the oscilloscope. Because you might just be setting some young person on a path to a, you know, a very satisfying and rewarding career. Like when my friends come around, my friends, my son's friends come around, my, my friends don't come around. Uh, <laughs> when my son's friends come around, I always tell them, make sure you show them the lab and ask them if they have any questions. All right, now I'm confused. It feels like I, sh I like I am missing something because, and I'll show you here, pardon the uh, handheldness for one moment. Over here, you see that component there? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Focus, man. What am I missing? Where am I missing it? Aha, there it is. Found it. Ding, ding, ding. That's why I'm glad you guys are here. I mean, had you not been here, I may not have, may not have found that. And then where would we be? Yes, where would we be indeed? Well, we'd probably be somewhere without a working frequency counter. Okay. Hey, we're, you know, we're almost done here. Isn't that something? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep it in frame. What I really need to keep in frame is my brain. Okay, what next? What should we do next? You want to do the microcontroller? No, you're all shaking your head. Save that for last. Okay, okay, we'll save that for last. Diodes? Switch? Okay, we'll do diodes next. Here we go. Hey. Diodes again. These are 4148s. Form them just like uh, the resistors, although remember, diodes are our polarized components, so pay attention to that black stripe line it up with the black stripe on the board or things may be no bueno all right i'm gonna solder the rest in all right we got all that stuff in and it's hot a couple more things and i'm gonna i'm gonna call it a day for a while and we'll finish this well for you it'll be instantaneous we'll just finish it the next time no we'll, for you we'll cut to a new scene new scene and it'll you know we'll be finishing it for me it'll be another day here's our crystal crystals are not polarized so you can put them in any way you like uh, yes I can solder with both hands that's another thing that just comes with time I once had a student tell me he was amphibious. I said, what? He said, I'm amphibious, man. I can work with either hand just as well. All right. I can dig that. Reminds me of uh, when I was in the Navy and we were in, we were in Scotland in Holy Lock. And a Scottish, a Scottish, a Scotsman asked me, what foot do I kick with? And 
honest to God, I didn't know what he was asking. I mean, I, 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 I knew what he was saying in English, what foot do I kick with, but I didn't know what it meant. I'm just going to bring that down here. You know, what, uh, was he asking me if I was straight or gay? You know, this was the late 80s, early 90s. As I said in Seinfeld, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm straight. Um, was he asking me what soccer team I followed? No. Anyway, I found out later he was asking me if I was Catholic or not. Which uh, is kind of like being gay, and not that there's anything wrong with that. That kind of went crooked on me. But that's okay, I don't really care. Alright, I'll be back. Yeah, I couldn't sleep again, so in the middle of the night I soldered on the last few components. We're down to the PIC-16F controller, which I've got here. And if you see, these, these pins are never parallel. They're always spread a little bit. What you can do is just kind of put them like that on your desk and give them just a tiny bit of a rock. So there's our pin one notch. Pin one notch. And we'll snap it all in place here. It doesn't take much pressure to get an IC into a socket, dip socket like that. So if you are feeling something, um, like a resistance, stop. It's, it's too much pressure. Now, I don't have a barrel jack that small. So to me it looks like Positive is the back connection. Negative will be the top connection. It uses 5 to 9 volts. We're just going to pop in a 9-volt battery connector. And we'll use 9 volts on it because that's just simpler. I just want to trim these down. You don't really need much when you're doing this. So, that nice and juicy and soldered there like that. And then the negative connection. All right, get her soldered in there. And that should be it for the construction. Okay, so battery, and we get the zero. So that tells us so far everything is working as it should. Let's, uh, let's bring in the frequency counter. Let me uh, whoop. Make sure we can see everything that we want to see at one time here. Power up the frequency counter. I'm just going to shut channel 2 off. Channel 1 is on. Square wave. And we'll connect it up here. Um, let me get a couple of jumper wires. Those header pins are just too close for my comfort. Alright, let's remember yellow is our positive. And then we'll hook it up. Bing. And bing. And what do we get? Nada. Channel one, I'm attached to channel one. Channel one is on. Okay. How about, is it these two pins? Hey, wait, we had something. 
then it went away I have no idea which pins I'm supposed to connect to because there were no there were no instructions let's try these two anything no outside there we go so it's the two outside pins putting in 10 kilohertz I know it's kind of hard for you to read but we're getting about 10 kilohertz let's uh, we'll change the frequency there's one kilohertz There's 11. I don't know why I went to 11. Let's see how low she'll go. There's a U.S. household frequency. Or, I'm sorry, U.K. household frequency. There is a U.S. household frequency. Looking good. Now, this says it goes up to 50 megahertz. Unfortunately, my, my generator only goes up to 6 megahertz. 5.8. Nine, 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 nine. You know what? It works. It's a good little frequency counter. Let us check out the um, the crystal thing, the the crystal, <laughs> the crystal oscillator part of the circuit. I can't find a single crystal. I had a bag of them. I don't know where they're at. Anyway, let's go over the specs for this thing. And the guy that made it, by the way, his name is. Wolfgang Wolf Boucher DL4YHF frequency range on it is um, from 1 to 50 megahertz he says his prototype worked up to 60 megahertz but that is above the uh, PIX timing specifications 5 digit resolution automatic range switching you can add a frequency offset or a preamplifier uh, 4 or 20 megahertz crystal and a few resistors uh, and if you go to his website actually it's on uh, qsl.net I'll link down below you can actually download uh, the firmware for the pick which is pretty nice this sells for about 11 bucks it's a fun kit it's it's a very easy kit there are no surface mount components to deal with so I will put it in my store if you're looking for something fun to do. Anyway, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys. Don't forget the uh, drawing for the 8008 multimeter sponsored by Banggood. That'll be on September 3rd. And uh, that's it. I'm out. Peace.